Well, ladies and gentlemen, always a pleasure to join you, and uh, I hope that you would agree with me that I think this is underlined uh, the importance of our uh, annual uh, National Equine Forum, that the quality of our speakers and the subjects they've covered uh, has left us with a lot more important information and uh, things we need to remember and do too. So I would like to immediately thank our chairman, Tim Bridgestock, and uh, all the team for arranging uh, this year's forum. Uh, I, I do get involved a bit in it, but and, and although there are quite often subjects we'd all like to tackle, getting them in the right place at the right time is always a bit of a challenge. So I think we've done a fantastic job this year uh, in doing exactly that. And perhaps it shows uh, the way it's evolving as a forum in the sense that the tickets are all sold out in advance of this event, uh, which is no mean achievement and a waiting list. Um, and I hope that also reflects an increase of the awareness of this forum uh, and the level of debate, sensible debate, that we have here. But uh, may I just underline Tim's earlier thanks to our forum family of sponsors, supporters, corporate friends and friends, because patently we couldn't uh, run this without them. And I think investing in the technology that I hope you feel has also in increased um, the enjoyment of this event and it's indeed it's the ability to spread the word uh, is hugely important and we, we, re we rely on them. And from the, we also would like to welcome, as part of that, which I hope they re it reflects that increased level of interest, from Equine Register, RSPCA and Spanner to the Forum family <coughs> this year. Um, new sponsors are always welcome. So I hope that you were encouraged also by the fact that we do continue to have new sponsors. And the innovations that we built on over the years on the website and, you know, now to the Slido, which I hope some of you, have, you obviously did try and thought it worked uh, reasonably well and just in, increased. I think the, the way that people respond to that sort of questioning and, and how many people think that that's important was uh, added, an, added a, a, a different sort of value to the, our debate as well. Uh, for those of you who want to go back over it or perhaps haven't seen it, uh, you will notice that um, it will, those presentations of today will be released, released on YouTube channel tomorrow. And you also had the opportunity to vote on the questions on Slido until Sunday evening. Um, there is a podcast, of course, which those of you who understand what you're doing, I'm sure, of, um, find it useful. Uh, um, and then look at some of those... Um, of the unanswered questions on Slido, which I think equally the one or two there that I would quite like to know the answer to. So I think uh, some of you will, will um, go back and look at that. Partly because there were so many thoughts to be provoked that you can't always think of the, the right questions at the right time. So uh, I hope that some of that investment um, will be regarded as a long-term value. Now, as always, I'm not going to go through everybody today because I think that would take me too long. I'm very easily distracted, you may have noticed. Um, so I won't go through them um, bit by bit because I think you've all had a, a good opportunity to ask the questions. And I, although I know he's not here anymore, I'm, I'm delighted that uh, Lord Gardner um, has joined us again because it's so rare to have that continuity of support um, uh, and with the ability to link in with the government and the department. So we're grateful for him and his, uh, the fact that he stayed for such a long time. Now, one of the aspects that I was aware of today, and I'm particularly um, grateful for Richard Newton for his presentation, uh, is, and it, although it was, I was already knew that I wanted to talk about that Animal Health Trust link, I think Richard Newton's um, presentation also underlined the importance, not just in terms of infectious diseases, but at least two or three others of the presentations linked back into work that the Animal Health Trust has been doing over the years. Uh, and I hope that all of you can appreciate uh, the importance that it has in supporting the welfare. I call it the science behind the welfare. But sadly, that science behind the welfare also means that it doesn't always get um, frontline 
support in terms of funds. And it is going through a really bad patch in that concept. It's almost as if the uh, equine flu outbreak last year, everybody went, oh, they'll, they'll be all right. Um, all this advertising, they'll get plenty of money. It doesn't work like that. And it hasn't worked like that. So um, we need to extend our level of support beyond the racing world, because I think that is unfair on the racing world, to have to be expected to provide all the investment into the work that happens at the Animal Health Trust. This is research work that affects all horse owners and, all, and to some extent in the small animals area as well. Um, the genetics work affects all your companion animals um, in their terms of their welfare. Don't, and not forgetting the Animal Health Trust is one of only three of the OIE, which is the World Organization of Animal Health, reference laboratories. And that gives it an enormous amount of reach, and it, it underlines its reputation and strength. It also, of course, very dependent on developing vaccines, and vaccines and the behavior of owners towards vaccines. Now, science behind the welfare can help provide the research and the development of the vaccines. Uh, arguably, it's not Animal Health Trust's responsibility to change human behaviour and to making sure those vaccines are delivered. But this does need to be a very joined up uh, process. And over the years, of course, the infectious diseases has been um, a very much an important part of the Animal Health Trust work. And things like equine herpes virus, EHV, is a major welfare concern for horses and foals. It doesn't matter where you have horses. Um, this will remain a very nasty uh, and potentially always present disease. And this year, the Animal Health Trust is on a th third year of a five-year research programme. So it's actually quite important that we manage to finish that because we're planning um, for up to five potential vaccines to be tested this year for their safety and ability to produce the right uh, immune response. But there are other things we don't, it's not just um, infectious diseases, although today has underlined the importance of that. Any horse owner will recognize that tendon injuries have a nasty habit of occurring at precisely the wrong moment. And the researchers at the HD have been looking at the embryonic uh, stem cells, which may ultimately give horses with tendon injuries a much greater chance of successful return to active work. We did touch on it today because it was one of the uh, issues about welfare and racing, of course, is bone fractures. And although it doesn't only happen in racing, it happens to all horses. And I suspect that one of the figures we don't know is how many more of those happen at home uh, in a field, hacking out horses done to each other, never mind the damage that can also be done on the road, which we know is part of the BHS is how to tackle not just the cracks that you might be able to just give time to, but the fractures that might be able to be supported in the future, which at the moment um, doesn't hold up much uh, of a future for horses who suffer fractures. So the scientists at, uh, at the AHT have, been, have made 3D printed scaffolds uh, that can be used to turn stem cells into bone in the laboratory. Now that paves the way towards the laboratory production of bone constructs that could be used to aid fracture repair in horses. Now we know that the difficulty is keeping horses off the damaged part, but if you can create the scaffold that helps to restore uh, the fracture, that could mean a lot less horses having to be destroyed uh, on the basis of bone damage. And the other subject that we touched upon, which is also uh, very much Animal Health Trust related, was strangles. Um, and thank you to the Turnbulls for telling their story. And I know some of you have been here a long time will have heard me talking about strangles as it affected Yakim and horse trials. And human behavior is a key to making a difference in how much strangles is in evidence uh, to the horse population in this country understanding where it comes from, where you need to test, uh, and how to avoid. 
which includes all the things we were talking about in terms of biosecurity, but very much human behaviour is saying, just take a little bit longer. If you want to bring a new animal into your premises, whether you're buying it, somebody else is bringing it in, do the test, Animal Health Trust. In, a couple, in I hope, not too long, uh, we will also have uh, a vaccine that will cope with strangles. That too is work that is going on at the Animal Health Trust. But all of those things are related to our understanding of what allows us to do welfare, i.e. the science behind it, and the human behaviour that makes it more likely that we will defeat those things which can be controlled or prevented. And bringing those two together uh, is really part of what the forum can do because there are the different organisations here have different routes into those who are taking advantage of the uh, information and advice that is already out there, but hopefully also the practice. And the difference that this forum can make, as and the Donkey Sanctuary makes this point as well on, in, in its uh, is it presentation about what is happening overseas, is that sometimes it is about going out and talking about it, going out and informing other people what those issues are and where those levels of support need to come. The, I would say that all of the, and I say this diffidently because there are a lot of organisations in here, all depend on fundraising. And so does the Animal Health Trust. And for many people, it's a decision about what is their priority and how they see that fitting in to the things that they want to be seen to be done. Uh, I would, I suppose, say that the science behind the welfare is always going to be important even if it isn't visible and even if it's directly linked into your experience. And there are others in um, the Animal Health Trust, particularly epidemiologists, on the future threats and that links in with the coronavirus issue. We never know quite where they're coming from. But unless we get our biosecurity better understood, things like the West Nile virus might become an issue. And West Nile virus is already capable of in affecting humans. So sometimes really nice when the things come around together, don't they? But that is a we need to understand uh, uh, how our habits can make a difference. And if we think West Nile um, fever is a, is a threat to our horses, and it could be to us, then we need to understand how we're going to deal with that. And we need help. Other aspects. Tokyo, back to Tokyo, um, although this work, which links in with the Animal Health Trust, of course, was done for Atlanta, which was the heat and humidity study. And I have to say, I thought that the shed that they used, which had wet towels stuck around all the, the areas where the air could get in, and the heaters and the fans that were going in, was a slightly Heath Robinson way of getting a re scientific result. But the result worked. It made an enormous difference. Uh, to the ability to compete at Atlanta. And that knowledge has been built on over the years and will make a real difference to having the confidence to compete in Tokyo. And a lot of that goes back, again, to pioneering work, literally pioneering, putting together things in order to try and come up with an answer at the Animal Health Trust. So that science is still going to be needed so that you can define welfare for your, for your own uses but it is a common denominator across a whole range of different issues. And what I hope is that this forum particularly recognises that it's not just the racing industry, which just happens to have a very a slightly easier way of getting money out of them, because it's a recognised uh, point of contact, not so easy for the other sport and leisure users uh, to understand and indeed to be able to contribute on a regular basis to make sure that organisations like that have some uh, stable funding. Maybe that should be linked with the passports and the information that we need for the future. That the benefits of having a passport and the information that it links you into will also help support uh, the science and the research that needs to go on to improve that welfare case. There are an awful lot of people are here today who have over the years made a profound contribution to the welfare of horses in particular in this country in a whole range of different ways. 
by work, owning them, working with them, uh, understanding where they sit in the relationship with, their, with um, the rest of the human race in all sorts of different ways. And that's what this forum, I hope, helps to do, is to bring those pieces together. But every now and again, it, and you will go back and continue to do that valuable work in your own places uh, and in your own way, and it will always continue to be valuable. But I hope you will also recognize that there are some occasions when you really do need to contribute um, to a single point, because it has such an impact on all of you. Part of that single point is here. So your interest and enthusiasm and your very presence and, and those of you who are listening uh, online and want to take part in other ways are equally crucial to making the best possible use of the knowledge that is gathered together for this forum through its presentations and through your involvement. So I hope you feel um, that this forum uh, has really added value uh, to what we understand and know and what we can continue to contribute, we can add, we can all add a bit more from our presence here today and what we've learned uh, than if we hadn't been here or hadn't indeed listened in. Um, I suspect each of you have, may have thought of one human behavior change that you might be able to make, which could make a difference. And if it's only one, that'd be very good. Um, I can think of about three. Um, <laughs> just to make sure that I do that. Um, but I am grateful for your attendance and your attendance in, in whatever capacity uh, today. And I hope you feel that we are still doing what the forum was really set up to do, and uh, which is joined, of course, by our founder in, in the Spending Awards, and I will now move on to those. And as he reflects, we reflect on his uh, ethics of passing on all that information and making sure that education still can make it a real difference uh, every time we gather. So thank you all. I will hand over to... Thank you, Your Royal Highness. I'm really pleased to be able to, to announce this year that we actually have joint winners of the Collins Spedding Award. And our first joint winner of this award is Eleanor Jones. The Sir Colin Spedding Award for 2020 is presented to Eleanor in recognition of a conscientious, tireless, and skillful journalistic coverage in Horse and Hound of many important welfare-led issues, giving them a very strong voice across the equine sector. By spreading the word in this way, she has undoubtedly helped significantly to change perceptions and to improve equine welfare. Eleanor, please come to the stage to collect your certificate and the bronze stag from yes. our president, Her Royal Highness, Thank the Princess Royal. Thank, Thank you. As I say, it's slightly different because, as I say, unusually we have a joint winner. And our second joint winner of the Sir Colin Spedding Award is Nigel Oakley. And it's presented to Nigel Oakley in recognition of his dedication and tireless energy in safeguarding and promoting the Suffolk Punch Horse, including owning, breeding, training, working, and showing this breed, as well as being a heavy horse ambassador for the Rare Breed Survival Trust. Nigel, please come to the stage to collect your certificate and the bronze stag, Beetle, from our President, Her Royal Highness. Thank you very much. Can you come 
We're going to do a joint one here. Oh, do you want to just go down there? Because if we don't go down there, he gets the podium in the way. So we go just down. That's it. You go down there.